Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a Raspberry Pi to a CRT using composite video. Here I have a CRT TV I just got recently. And here's my Raspberry Pi inside a Super NES case. Okay, many people may not know that you could connect a Raspberry Pi over CRT because it doesn't even have composite ports. So if you look at the back of it, you see it has an HDMI, audio input, and power input. The way you use composite on a, on a Raspberry Pi is by using the audio jack right there. And what you'll need in order to use composite is one of these cables. One side has a headphone connector and the other side has three RCA plugs. One for video and two for audio. For some reason, this cable doesn't seem wired correctly because the red signal, the red cable is outputting the video signal. Video is supposed to go through the yellow cable and audio is supposed to go to the red and white cables for left and right audio. Anyway, I have to use a red cable in order to plug it into the input, the video input on the TV. The Pi itself, um, from the three, Raspberry Pi 3 and down, composite video is enabled by default. You don't have to set up, configure anything. You don't have to edit any files or set up any configuration to get composite to work. You just have to make sure that the there's no HDMI cable plugged in the back of the Raspberry Pi. You have to connect the Raspberry Pi through, through the composite port. On the Raspberry Pi 4, however, you have to actually um, add a line to a configuration file in it in order to enable composite output. Because on the Raspberry Pi 4, performance is, it's actually slower when you enable composite on it. So I'll provide in the description um, what file needs to be needs to be edited and what to add to that file in order to get composite working on the Raspberry Pi 4. I don't have one, so I can't really demonstrate it. I just have a Raspberry Pi 3 here and also have a Raspberry Pi 2, but the process is the same on both, the Pi 2 and the Pi 3. Okay, so let me plug this in, just demonstrate how it works. Okay, so let me begin plugging everything together. So I'll take the AV cable that I have and take the 3.5 millimeter end and attach it to the headphone port of the Raspberry Pi. And then I'll leave the HDMI port vacant. Remember, you can't have a HDMI plug connected or else this won't work. And I'll attach, like I mentioned before, the red cable is the one that's outputting video on this cable for some reason. It should be yellow, but it's not. So I'll use the red cable. So if you have, if you're not getting any video output, try using each one of these cables to see which one is actually outputting video. So I'll attach the red cable to the yellow port on the TV and I'll attach any one of these yellow or white cables onto the other port. Okay, the next step is just to power on the Raspberry Pi. On a standard Raspberry Pi, if you plug in the power, it will automatically turn on. But this one won't because of the case that I have. This case have a, has a power switch. So if I just turn on the power and the TV power too, the Raspberry Pi should start booting on the television. And there you go, it's coming on. I'll plug in a game controller. I have this Super Nintendo theme controller on the Super Nintendo themed Raspberry Pi case. 
I'll just shut it down again just to show you how it works again. Okay, so let me turn it on again with the TV already on. And you see it comes on. The Raspberry Pi starts booting up. And then I'll just show you how some games run. And here we have Super Mario Brothers. My goal for this is to actually um, use my Mr. FPGA device because you'll get I'll get much better much better latency with controls than a Raspberry Pi. But I need an analog adapter that hasn't arrived yet. So once that arrives, I'll create another video showing how that works. But this looks awesome. This looks great, just like how I remembered. Now let's try another game. And here we have Final Fight for the Super NES. The game looks great. I'll try one more game, a Genesis game. And now for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 on Genesis. You may have noticed that the way I plugged in the audio onto the TV, that I wouldn't get any stereo sound on the systems that support stereo. A way around this is just to use an adapter that will convert the two audio RCA plugs on the cable into one RCA plug. That way, both audio channels will go straight into the television. Another method is to create a file in the ETC directory of the Raspberry Pi. The method to show you how to do this, I'll provide in the description. What it basically does, it takes the stereo output of the Raspberry Pi and down mixes it to mono. This is helpful if you plan to connect the Raspberry Pi permanently to a device that only supports mono sound. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, Hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.